Hey, what's going on beautiful people of the internet? This is ModBot and my name is Daniel and in today's video we are going to be reviewing the JG Aurora A5 3D printer. This is a printer that I got in about a month ago that I was really excited to be able to review for a few reasons. The majority of the 3D printers that I get in are kit printers which I do have a lot of fun assembling and upgrading them and kind of tweaking them to my liking, but it was a really nice break from this to get this pre-assembled 3D printer in. The JG Aurora A5 3D printer has a build volume of 305mm by 305mm by 320mm, which is about 50% bigger than most of my current printers. The heated bed has a black diamond glass bed similar to that of the Anycubic i3 Mega, at least that is what I've been told, and it's fantastic for holding onto your prints and allowing them to pop off very easily once the bed has cooled down to room temperature. The A5 uses a single Bowden style extruder that comes installed with your standard 0.4 nozzle and it can print in a range from 180 to 240 Celsius. When printing on the A5, you have the option to print from a USB cable tethered to a computer or from the supplied USB flash drive using its very nice color touchscreen on the front of the printer, which I wasn't sure how I was going to like, but after using it for the last month, it's really nice. It actually is really responsive and is, you know, not a pain at all to use, so uh, I like the interface. One really nice feature that this machine has that most, if not all, all of my other machines do not have is power failure protection, meaning if the power goes out in the middle of a huge print, you can simply resume the print and it will pick up where it left off. Now, I did do this, and when I unplugged it and plugged it back in, I hit resume, it then heated up the nozzle, then moved the nozzle to the front of the printer, heated up the bed, and then continued. I will say that I only killed the power for a few minutes, so if you have no power for many hours, I cannot vouch that the resume will work. I do not know how long the battery or the built-in uh, memory is you know, able to pick up where it left off. So um, again, at your own risk with that. The JG Aurora A5 came in a massive box. Seriously, it was huge and very heavy. Everything was packaged really nicely and nothing was damaged upon shipping, which is always great. I did notice one loose screw in the box, but it ended up just being one of the bed leveling screws, so I quickly twisted it back on when unpacking the base of the printer and everything else was completely fine. Now, the JG Aurora A5 comes in two main pieces when you unbox it. It has the base, which the base has the bed and build surface with the touchscreen, the power supply inside of it, and the internal mainboard. And the other big piece it comes with is the main frame that contains the X and the Z axes along with the extruder and the hot end. From unboxing to the point where it was ready to print, there's literally seven screws to install. Four screws will connect the two main parts of the printer to each other, which is, again, the build area and the X and Z frame and three screws will go into the top frame to secure the filament holder. The printer did come with a manual, and it could have been me because I was tired and live streaming, but the little diagram did not make a whole lot of sense to me. However, since it was seriously only those seven screws, it was very easy to figure it out without the use of any sort of instructions at all. Once the frame was together, the next step was to level a large bed on the JG Aurora A5. The machine has a feature called semi-auto bed leveling, but after using it, I'm not quite sure if you can even call it that at all. If you use the touchscreen menu under the bed leveling uh, feature, there are five options that are top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and center. Choosing one of these options will move the nozzle to the selected location on the bed. You will then use an included sheet to level the bed just like you normally would on any printer. Having the five points built in does not actually save you time in my opinion, but I did use it because why not? After that, I set off to print. I found two upgrades that I wanted to do for the machine. One was for a better fan shroud and one was to fix a design issue that made cables from the bed rub against cables from a stepper motor when printing. Well, after I printed the part to move the cables out of the way, I realized that my machine didn't actually have those cables where I had seen them in many other videos, meaning that, that JG Aurora made a revision to my version of the printer, and I'm assuming all of them um, once they realized that there was an issue with cables rubbing against other cables. I still do plan on adding the fan shroud, but at the time of making this video, I have yet to attach it. Once I had successfully printed these prints, I set out to test the total build volume. I printed a massive 50 hour print, which is the biggest print I have done to date and longest, of a beautiful lighthouse that I ended up giving to my mom for her birthday. I was nervous and part of me thought the print was destined to fail in one way or another, but I was wrong. The print actually turned out nearly perfect, and the only bit of drooping was on a few rocks where it could have used some additional support material on my end. During my large print, I tested out the filament runout sensor, which worked extremely well. When unloading filament, there is an unload button you simply press that will spit out all the filament in the Bowden tube. When you put your new filament spool on the holder and are ready to feed it in, you press the in arrow, which will grab the filament and push it through to the hot end. Now when swapping filament in the nozzle, it automatically moves to the front of the printer away from your print so that there is no plastic oozing down on your print, which is a really nice add-on feature. For fun, I also did a miniature print torture test livestream on this machine to see how well it could handle very small prints. 
It did about as good as I'd expected, and I think the prints I attempted to print may have been far too small. I did a miniature Rick from Rick and Morty, which turned out better than I had even expected, but I also did a boat similar to a Benji, but extremely more detailed and a lot smaller, which turned out to be a disaster. The machine can print small, no problem, but microscopic is a completely other story. All in all, I love this machine, and I think for the price of around 400 US dollars on GearBest, it's definitely a steal. When you combine the build volume, the rigidness, and the little to no setup, this definitely makes it an extreme contender to other machines like the CR10 and the Anycubic Mega. I try to give the good and not so good for the machines I get in, and so for this machine, the only thing that I have not liked about it is the noise. The frame being mostly metal on the machine makes it extremely solid and rigid, but it also makes it very loud, and there seems to be a lot of sound echoing off the printer, and it's definitely louder than most of my other machines. Also, the two tiny fans on the hot end, which are a little bit smaller than most of the other fans, seem to create a lot of noise, especially when the machine is first turning on. I do plan on replacing the stepper drivers with silent ones to see if that makes them uh, quieter, the whole movement, and the fans also I'd like to replace with quieter ones, but out of the box, they are definitely noisy. This really is not the biggest of deal, but when you're like me and your print lab is in your bedroom, a 50 hour print can turn into quite a few sleepless nights. One other thing is that the machine shows that it has Wi-Fi under the settings, which I don't think is talked about on the product page, but it does have Wi-Fi, so I don't know whether the company plans on adding Wi-Fi capabilities to this or if the board has it built in. Either way, I do plan on adding Octoprint to this machine, but if it has Wi-Fi in the menu, it should probably have Wi-Fi, and I feel like they need to update their firmware to not include the Wi-Fi setting if that's not something included, because it will, I would say that will confuse some people, so... Anyways, if you guys would like to find out more on the JG Aurora A5 3D printer or purchase one for yourself, I'll place a link in the description down below. And if you have any other further questions for me that I maybe did not answer in this review, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to get back and respond uh, as soon as possible. On that note, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe for more great videos and I will see you in my next video. Peace guys.